What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're gonna to be checking out some gaming and emulation on the Rabbit R1 AI device. Now, a lot of you may have heard about this. It did stir up quite a bit of drama online and I pre-ordered mine a long time ago. I never canceled it because I had a feeling that the community would come through and kind of make this a better device. I really wanted to see what all the fuss was about. And yeah, I mean, by itself with Rabbit OS on it, there's not a lot that you can do here that you couldn't do on your iPhone or your Android device all by itself. Installing something like OpenAI or just using your built-in AI Assistant app is gonna work just as well as something like this. But I did love the overall design. This was actually designed by Teenage Engineer very minimalistic, and yeah, it's a pretty cool looking little device. But with the stock operating system, it's very limited. So what I've done here is install Android. The process itself is actually pretty simple and you can recover it quite easily. If you head over to the link in the description, it's a GitHub project known as Rabbit R1 Escape. And uh, I mean, you can do it from Linux, you can do it from Windows. They've got the image, all instructions over there and instructions on how to restore the stock firmware if you ever wanted to go back to Rabbit OS. There's a lot of stuff working here, but there are a few things that aren't. Uh, getting Google Play up and running is actually pretty simple. I've downloaded a bunch of games and emulators, plus a few apps that we're gonna be testing out in this video. They've also got a way to get the cameras up and running. We've got the scroll wheel over here. So there's basically two buttons on the uh, Rabbit R1. You've got the power button and you've got the scroll wheel. And Android, this will actually control the volume but I can't get Bluetooth controllers or USB controllers working with this unit yet. I've got a good feeling that, you know, with a later update to uh, R1 Escape, we will see functionality there. But unfortunately, at the time I'm making this video, without some crazy workarounds, I just can't get those Bluetooth controllers or even wired controllers working with this unit. So for the games we're gonna be testing here, mostly I'm gonna be using the touch screen. It does have an auto rotate feature, but I can't get it working unless I use a third party application like a rotation control. And going into certain apps, having rotation control on is definitely gonna be the way to go. For instance, YouTube, that way you get a larger image here. If not, it's gonna be kind of in portrait mode. Volume is working. We've got a single two watt speaker. You can play back from Netflix, YouTube, you can install Hulu on this unit if you wanted to. And to tell you the truth, installing Android has made this a much more usable device, but you can pick up a used Android phone or even a prepaid Android phone for much cheaper that's going to perform better than this. And speaking of performance, I did want to give you a quick rundown on the specs here. The Rabbit R1's price is coming in at $199, and remember, it's not going to have Android pre-installed, at least not Android like you're seeing here. But when it comes to the CPU, we've got the MediaTek MT6765 up to 2.3 gigahertz, four gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of internal storage, a 2.88 inch touchscreen display, single two watt speaker around the rear, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. It also supports 4G LTE. We've got a 1000 milliamp hour battery built in. So definitely not specs to write home about, but it's actually coming in more powerful than I thought it would when they initially announced this unit. Now it's time to test out a few games. So we're gonna start off with some native Android gaming. We're gonna do Minecraft. With this game here, I didn't need to use that third-party rotation control app. It just automatically goes over here for us. We're gonna load right into some Minecraft and see exactly what happens. With the specs we have here, I do think it's actually gonna run it, but I have been running into a lot of issues with Minecraft on Android since a few updates. Even on my Galaxy S23 Ultra, I've always got skips going on inside of the game. It doesn't matter what I do with it. It's definitely a bug that they need to address. Uh, I've seen a few people complaining about it online. And I think we might see it here also. I mean, it's actually not too bad. The CPU GPU combo they have here really isn't that bad. I've seen more expensive phones with lower end specs than this. And, uh, you know, recently we've had an influx in those prepaid devices like from Straight Talk and Boost Mobile. Pretty decent devices for really cheap, but those are kind of on a subscription service because you do need to be paying for the service every month also. And with this, I didn't go into the settings, turn down the chunks or anything like that. I'm sure if we turned off fancy graphics, turn those chunks down, we could get a little better performance, but it's not super stuttery. It's definitely running pretty decently, a lot better than I thought it would going into this game here. And I know Minecraft isn't the hardest game to run, but to see it on this device is actually pretty impressive if you ask me. I also installed Among Us just to see how it would work, and it's actually pretty easy to play this game with just the touch screen itself.
Next up, we've got a racing game. I tried to install Real Racing 3, and that's one of those games that's been on the market for a long time. Unfortunately, it would not let me install it, said my device wasn't compatible. But we've got Rebel Racing here, which is a good-looking racing game. Super arcadey, obviously, like a lot of these Android racing games. But it does work. Next thing I was interested in taking a look at was some Retro Arch on this device, and it loads right up. I can go through, download some cores. I did download Doom here, but without a controller, it's just really hard to play. So I opted to test out a little bit of GBA, and making these buttons bigger through the Retro Arch interface would definitely work much better. Getting to that D-pad and the uh, A, B, X, Y buttons is a bit hard on the smaller screen here. But performance is great here. I'm sure we could do NES, SNES, some PC Engine, Neo Geo on this device. It might even handle some N64, and as soon as we get real controller support, I will be doing another video. But let's go ahead and take the emulation up a notch. To Dreamcast, using the ReDream emulator. Got the FPS up in the top left hand corner there, it is fluctuating. I cannot believe I hit that, I was sure I was going to miss that ramp. But getting to these buttons is definitely a lot easier. And through another app, I took a look just to see what kind of backends we could use. We do have access to Vulkan with this build of Android. And by the way, this is actually Android 13 running on the Rabbit R1. Not too bad when it comes to Dreamcast. Of course, it could do a little better. And I'm not exactly sure how the governor is working with this build of Android. If we could get into the performance governor, I'm pretty sure we'd be able to run this continuously at 60 FPS. Might be a bit limited due to the 1000 milliamp hour battery they have here. They may have wanted to save some power. Not exactly sure what kind of power profiles they're using. Moving over to some PSP using PPSSPP. And this is the app that I could choose from OpenGL or Vulkan. Went with Vulkan because on this MediaTek chip it does perform a bit better. We've got Tekken 5 and uh, this is an easier game to run in my opinion. 1x resolution, no frames get right now. Definitely got those dips going under. Got some hiccups going on every once in a while. So adding frame skip through the PPSSPP settings would probably help out. But then that would cut that frame rate from 60 down to 30. And just taking a look at the performance with this, you know, I've tested a lot of emulators on a lot of different hardware. I don't think we're going to be running the PSP God of War games on this at full speed. With frame skip, yeah, I mean, we could definitely get by playing those. But in my experience, I just do not like frame skip. And the final thing I wanted to take a look at here was some in-home PC game streaming using Steam Link. With this, I can use a controller because I've actually got the controller connected to my gaming PC. And this isn't coming from the cloud or anything like that. This is actually on my home network. It still gives me those on-screen touch controls just in case I wanted to use it like that. But I've got the Xbox controller connected to the PC. I believe the Rabbit R1 has a Wi-Fi 5 chip. It's not Wi-Fi 6, but we can pick up that 5 gigahertz network. And streaming from my in-home PC actually works really well. When you're streaming games or using any kind of cloud gaming service, you always run into a little bit of latency here. But overall performance streaming to this device is very, very playable. So the Rabbit R1, even with Android installed, isn't for everyone. But you know, if you did pick one up, you never canceled that pre-order, you just have it kind of laying around, you can definitely install Android on it. And I'll tell you, now that I've done this with the R1, I've been having a lot more fun with it. It's kind of bringing me back to the old days of the Motorola Droid, rooting it every single day, putting new ROMs on it. Of course, we don't have a lot of ROMs to choose from, basically just one right now, but I'm sure the community will come through as soon as more people get their hands on this. But first and foremost, this was actually designed to be an AI device. So I went ahead and installed ChatGPT. Can you tell me what the Rabbit R1 AI device is? The Rabbit R1 is an AI powered pocket device that aims to simplify digital tasks. It uses a large action model, LM, to perform tasks across various apps without needing complex integrations like APIs. This means it can handle tasks such as booking travel, ordering food, and managing music by interacting with the apps just as a human would. The device itself is compact, with a 2.88 inch touchscreen, a rotating camera, a scroll wheel, and a push to talk button. It's designed to function independently with Wi-Fi and cellular connectivity. The Rabbit R1 is powered by a MediaTek Helio P35 processor with 4 gigs of RAM and 
128 gigs of storage. It is priced at $199 and doesn't require an ongoing subscription fee. That's cool. What do you think about it? The Rabbit R1 seems like a pretty innovative device. Its ability to handle a variety of tasks through the large action model without needing complex setups is impressive. The design is also intriguing being compact and functional with features like the rotating camera and touchscreen. The fact that it doesn't require a subscription fee is a big plus. However, it will be interesting to see how it performs in real world usage and how well it integrates with different apps and services over time. So yeah, even with Android installed, we've still got a portable AI device here. Battery drain is definitely a lot more with Android on it, but you know, that's kind of a given. There's just a lot more running in the background and we've only got a thousand milliamp hour battery in this unit, but it'd be really interesting to see what the community does with this in the future. But that's gonna wrap it up for this one. If you do end up getting one of these and installing Android on it and you find some really cool tricks, let us know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.